Whoa there, Link. I think we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Let's go back and relive some of the adventures that brought us here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think that's where we left off. All right. Hello Internet, and welcome back to the Artist Studio. I'm your artist and host, Dylan. In today's video, we're going to be finishing up our first build in the Zelda Launch Extravaganza with the Deku Scrub Mask. Before getting into any color, we're going to need to prime this whole thing. Generally, you're going to want to use a primer that closely matches the tone that you're working with as a base color. For me, however, I'm just going to use the solid white. The black paint I'll be using later is thick enough that it should be able to cover everything with one or two coats. Be sure to prime any project you're going to paint. It's going to save you a lot of time, effort, and extra paint later on. Every material that you're working with has a different absorptive property, meaning anytime you paint over multiple surfaces, it's going to finish slightly different. So without a primer, it's going to look a little sloppy. So definitely use a primer on your projects. And while you're at it, fill in some of those nooks and crannies. With the primer done and left overnight to dry, it's time to add the base color. For the face, we're going to use black, and then later we're going to work up a brown gradient. For the leaves, I don't think we're going to use green as the base color. Instead, we're going to use yellow. I was looking at these dropped leaves from my crown of thorns, and I quite like the yellow that's showing in underneath some of these older ones. I think I'm going to emulate it for the Deku scrub leaf. So that means we'll start off yellow, and then we'll work up a darker gradient using greens later. Now to paint the gradient on the face. For my choice of paint, I like to use acrylics, much for the same reasons I like to use Well Bond. Both crafting materials are quite forgiving. Each one has a short open time, but can be extended quite easily with just a bit of water. The Deku Scrub has this sort of illuminated look, as though it's being lit from the bottom up, so we'll have to preserve some of that black at the top then work up several layers of brown from the bottom up.
crafters like to use oil solvents for washing colors onto their projects. Though I find watered down acrylics works just as nice. And it's a lot less toxic too. No hazardous fumes to go along with acrylics. Not to mention that it takes much less time to dry. And any mistakes that you make, just add more water and wipe it away. And just be sure to safely dispose of excess paint in the waste bin. Just a reminder for everyone, paint does not go down the drain. There isn't any sewage treatment plant that can process it. For best practice, just leave your paint cup out to dry and toss any dried paint into the waste bin. You can use something like a coffee filter to drain off some of the extra water if you want to be extra cautious. Once dried, acrylics generally become inert, but the same can't be said when they're poured down the drain. So while ending up in the landfill isn't much better, it certainly is better than ending up in the drain. But hey, that's enough greenwashing for me. There is no planet blah, 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 blah. Much of my building here in the studio is scratch built, which is sort of like saying improvisational making. The same definitely goes for painting. You'll notice when I start painting something for the first time, I'm not entirely sure how I want to approach it. For instance, these leaf segments were quite the challenge to get right. Using acrylics sort of lets me have an undo function in real life. If I'm really not in love with the direction that I'm heading, I can wipe away what I've done, erase a little bit, and take a different approach. I realized at a certain point, the paintbrush just wasn't giving me the effect that I was looking for, and I was going to need to strum these leaves au naturel. So at this point, my fingers started becoming a bit numb. But you know, I'll fight through this torment just for you. And besides, I couldn't be happier with how these leaves are turning out. Now a final wash to smooth some things out. And some green on the edge to outline. and some brown wash at the ends to give it a sort of aged look. And then onto the eyes. This area was quite the challenge. 
I want to give the eyes a deep glowing effect, but I also want to conceal the real eye holes in the crux of the eye socket. To get a good glowing effect, it took me a lot of work. Starting with a white base, I began building up the layers slowly over time. I found myself constantly going over the same spots several times just to get the right gradient. Every time I made a mistake, I'd try to wipe away just like a little bit, but it was like two steps forward, one step back. If you're going to be as trepidatious as I, be sure your undercoat is completely dry, otherwise you'll risk pulling up some of those colors underneath. Now I have to somehow repeat this whole process. Don't you wish life just had a copy and paste feature? Or like a fast forward feature? Hey. Hey, wait a second. Hey Link, can you help me out? Ah, there. Perfect. Add a bit of red here. Sometimes when adding color, just adding a little bit adds a lot of personality. Like a bit of red at the end of these leaves will create a sunset look. And with that, it's time for this to dry for the night. While I rest up, why don't you head over to the Discord server? Be a part of the growing artists community and get tips and tricks for your latest projects. Good morning, everyone. It's time to play with some wood. Ugh, I mean, it's time to give this mask some wooden texture. Deku scrubs themselves are wooden creatures. Without any wooden grains, it doesn't quite look like a Deku scrub. So I'm going to use some black paint to add some wooden texture into the face, but I'm also going to keep returning to these eyes. The glowing effect that I'm looking for just isn't quite there yet.
I work on this left eye, obviously forgetting Link and I discovered time travel earlier, why not head over to Patreon and consider donating to the channel? Not only will you have access to exclusive content to patrons, your donation will allow me to keep working on content like this to get it out to viewers like you. So my partner commented that the eyes need to be a bit more yellow, which I couldn't agree with more. The yellow gives it a deeper glow, while the white highlights I gave the mask earlier makes the eyes still feel bright. Next I used a marker to really darken up the wood grain. I began filling in the back with a lot more of this grain, but I then realized that it just needed a dark wash. This gave it a nice ebony wood look. Lastly, I'll be finishing off the mask with a polyurethane clear semi-gloss. This will provide the mask an oiled wood look, while also completely sealing the mask, making it highly water resistant. Not that I would ever intend to get it wet. And with that, the mask is done! Oh, do, do you feel that? Oh, what is happening? I don't, I don't know what this feeling is. It was just my unwavering desire to wear this for 24 hours a day, for three days straight. Although, now that I think about it, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh well. In my opinion, the mask turned out great. While the eye holes work about as great as you'd expect, and I wouldn't want to wear this for hours on end at a con or something, it's overall fairly comfortable and breathability isn't a concern at all. I think it looks amazing. But of course, if you do disagree, let me know in the comments. What would you do differently? Or what would you add to improve the finished look? Either way, like and subscribe if you did enjoy the project and want to see more content like this from the Artist's Studio. Lastly, if you have the means, please consider becoming a patron for the channel. Though, I do understand if you can't at this time. I love you anyways. Now go get crafty. Wait a minute, what am I doing here? What do you mean I can't just skip through time however I want? Honestly? No one told me there were time police. <laughs> Going around telling people how to experience their unidirectional state of being. Guess I'm just stuck here painting this eye because someone wanted to go messing around with time. Oh well.